Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video, this countdown video uh, to the start of the Atlantic hurricane season. We're now 17 days out and so I hope that you're all having a really marvelous Monday thus far and I certainly am because today is actually my 19th birthday so uh, I'm happy about that especially since it coincides with the start of the Pacific hurricane season so uh, I'm going to be going into some details about that for you guys and I'll also be taking you through what is expected across the Caribbean. Uh, we're going to be looking at what is expected uh, throughout today and a bit for the long term as well. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update. Okay guys, and so first things first, we want to take a look at uh, what the National Hurricane Center has for today. So today, May 15th, uh, is the first day, of course, of the routine issuance of outlooks from the National Hurricane Center. And uh, if you've noticed, one of the changes made is that uh, it's no longer a five-day graphical tropical weather outlook map, but rather a seven-day graphical tropical weather outlook. So uh, that is one of the changes made. And of course, this, was, uh, this came into effect a couple of years ago because of the increased activity during the month of May, that pre-season activity. So as a result of that, they decided that, okay, we're going to start issuing these outlooks two weeks prior to the start of the hurricane season, which is May 15th. And this coincides with the Eastern Pacific hurricane season. So the EPAC season has officially begun today. And in the outlook text here, uh, we can see that it says that today marks the first day of the Eastern North Pacific hurricane season, which will run until November 30th. Long-term averages for the number of storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes are 15, 8, and 4, respectively. And then, of course, the list of names for this uh, Eastern Pacific season is given, of course, going from Adrian to Zelda. And so, uh, of course, I'm going to be linking the NHC down in the description so you can go ahead and read more about these and also the different updates uh, that they've made to their products. So uh, that is one thing I wanted to get out of the way. So if we should see maybe a system make its way off Africa or even uh, just an area of some concentrated moisture where we could see some development, this is where we would see it being highlighted. And and uh, we would see the chance designated to it for potential development. But as of now, of course, there isn't anything out there uh, expected for the immediate future. So let's now go ahead and take a look at what is happening across the basin. So we're looking at the uh, infrared satellite imagery for the North Atlantic, and we can see that we've got a lot of convective activity over in Western Africa. We see that blob that has moved off the coast of the continent. And then, of course, as we drift to the west, we want to take a look at uh, some, some more of these areas going to northeast. Eastern South America, where we have Guyana, Suriname, and French Guiana. We can see that uh, there is definitely some convective activity just north of these territories. Uh, some of that is actually has actually made its way into uh, Guyana, likely bringing some inclement weather conditions. But for most of these areas at the moment, uh, we're seeing that there isn't much going on. So maybe some beautiful sunshine for you guys. However, throughout today, there is going to be the chance of rainfall and we're going to be taking a look at the rainfall map very soon. But now let's go ahead and uh, move more to the Caribbean and take a look at what is happening across the different areas. And so uh, we can see here that there is some activity noted within the region. So uh, over in the Gulf of Mexico, we've got that blob of convection, lots of uh, showers and thunderstorms within the area with possibly some strong winds as well. So the northeastern part of Mexico is likely being impacted by this as well as southern Texas. Uh, so guys, of course, in the event of consistent heavy rainfall, there might be flooding, especially in those low-lying areas. So please do not take any unnecessary risks. Going over into parts of Central America, we can definitely see that there is some uh, shower and thunderstorm activity noted within the area. And as a matter of fact, quite a bit of rainfall is expected for parts of the Northwestern Caribbean today. And again, we'll be looking at that map very shortly. But uh, going over more to the Cayman Islands and also Jamaica and Cuba, uh, we're not seeing that much activity, but likely some overcast skies for some areas, maybe a brief shower or so this morning. And then, of course, going up into the Bahamas where we have that trough, we still see where some activity is being induced. We've got some showers and thunderstorms 
storms associated with it. We see that little blob right there. And then, of course, going over to the Eastern Caribbean, we've got that flow of activity coming from South America, likely resulting in some overcast skies and even some brief showers at times for some of those islands and so that is what is happening at the moment and if we should look down into uh, parts of Colombia there is so much activity taking place there right now so for Colombia parts of Venezuela even going into uh, Panama down there we can see some activity so uh, likely lots of rainfall lots of thunderstorms for you guys down there and so guys now let's go ahead and take a look at the precipitation expected by the GFS and Euro models and we're going to be starting out with GFS and so uh, as this map becomes more colorful as we head more to those shades of uh especially those reds, burgundy, purple, pink, that is increased in rainfall totals expected. And of course, uh, there are the colors with values beside them to show how much rainfall is expected, and it is uh, in inches. So throughout the rest of today, we can see here that the GFS uh, is anticipating that there's going to be quite a bit of rainfall for some areas, some substantial rainfall for parts of northern South America. Uh, most areas, as a matter of fact, Suriname, French Guiana, Guyana, uh, parts of Brazil, Venezuela, Colombia, we can definitely see where some substantial rainfall is likely. But for parts of northern Venezuela, we're seeing that there isn't much anticipated. And uh, going up, of course, into the Eastern Caribbean, similar story. Not much is going to be happening throughout today. Maybe some brief showers at the most, but no major rainfall events for you guys. Heading over into parts of Central America, though, we can see that for Costa Rica and Panama, uh, those areas are also likely to receive quite a bit of rainfall. So, uh, we see that Nicaragua, parts of uh, Honduras, as well as El Salvador are going to be in the clear according to what the GFS is showing, but to go into Guatemala, as well as Belize, and uh, the Yucatan Peninsula, we can see that lots of rainfall activity is likely throughout today, especially as we head to the afternoon hours. And of course, other areas expected to receive some rainfall today include the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, Cuba, and of course, Hispaniola. So, uh, and going up into the vicinity of the Bahamas, there we can see that those higher totals are expected offshore of the islands, or at least some of the islands, based on what the GFS is showing. Then going on to the Euro model, we can see that it is a similar story pretty much for the most part uh, it is expecting the same thing here most of northern and South America experiencing substantial rainfall things being pretty dry in the east but as we head to Hispaniola Cuba Jamaica the Cayman Islands over uh, going to Central America we can see some of those higher totals expected and of course in the vicinity of the Bahamas you guys are likely to receive some rainfall but maybe less compared to what took place yesterday and on Saturday so that is what is expected in terms of the rain rainfall and so guys this increase in moisture is likely to persist across the Caribbean of uh, the Northwestern Caribbean specifically and throughout this week uh, most of these areas here are likely going to be continually receiving rainfall so some increased rainfall but of course I'm going to be covering all of that in future update videos and so guys, uh, finally, now we're coming down to the last two things that I want to make mention of. So uh, of course, looking at the sea surface temperature map right here, we can definitely see where things are warming up nicely across uh, most of the North Atlantic Basin, the Caribbean, the Gulf is getting there. Even the Gulf Stream is warming up as well as parts uh, of the tropical Atlantic. And this trend is going to be continuing as we progress uh, into the coming months. And then uh, the GFS and Euro have been hinting at uh, maybe development of something of the east coast of the US that eventually moves inland. So of course this is just one model run here, uh, but I find it interesting that both the GFS and Euro are showing it. Uh, Euro showing something much weaker though, but definitely showing that uh, hinting that we could see something develop near the latter part of the month. And so I'll be covering that in future updates as well. So in tomorrow's video, I'm going to be talking more about that. And that is pretty much it for right now. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments and you can also share your thoughts there. And of course, remember to always be with wise.